from basic arithmetic to complex equations for many school children and indeed adults maths can be a daunting and confusing subject don't worry because now an artist from bristol believes he may have found a solution for those struggling with numbers by transforming them into colors jasmine katibua foley has been to meet him maths is not everyone's favorite subject but one artist's idea of transforming numbers into multicolour art could help to change that. I decided to count the main colours that we had. I counted um, white, black, brown, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I was like, that's a base 10 counting system. It takes it away from maths being something that is just something that we need to learn to answer a question. This language of maths unlocks doors to education. To have an understanding of maths is, is really important. So how does this visual method work, Brooke? This pink circle represents the number three. This expanding balloon of orange, when read vertically, reads plus five, giving us an answer of eight, a blue circle. It can be read in any direction and in reverse, and opens up a world of unendingly beautiful patterns. The same applies for multiplication and utilises the power of imagery to retain important number facts. 36 divided by four is nine. nine. Well done. After learning the technique and putting their equations on butterflies, pupils at Calacroft Primary seem to be getting the hang of it. Because you don't need to use numbers and it's easier to remember. This inspires me about how the colours are from with numbers and how interesting they are. If I'm stuck on three times four, I know it because I can just look at my headbands. Especially in year four, there's a big um, government pressure around the children understanding all of the times tables. This way is, allows them to think a little bit more deeply about the times table. Any method, any approach to teaching maths, to presenting maths, to getting people to engage with maths that is new and that is potentially going to help overcome that mental barrier that people have or people who have maths anxiety or dyscalculia, any way of helping people to engage with the subject to me is just a huge positive. Wow, look at all this maths flying in the sky. This new technique is making the future look promising for people who suffer from maths anxiety. And it's clear that those who have had a go are already getting very excited for... <laughs> Jasmine Ketibua Foley, BBC News. Well, we are joined now by maths teacher and National Numeracy Charity Ambassador, Bobby Siegel. Morning, Bobby. Bringing the colour. Good morning. It's all about the yellow. the colour, bringing the subject to life. Is, so, yeah, is yellow yeah. a seven or so? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what number that was. Um, I hate to ask a kind of a very basic question here, no. but how does this work? How does the colour association work with our brains? So I think it's trying to find different ways of engaging people's brains because obviously number is an abstract concept. And when we're in school, we initially, you know, we learn about concrete things, like we're counting cars, physical cars, and then eventually we look at the pictures of cars, and then eventually we write, oh, the numbers represent the pictures. So colours are just another way of adding almost like to a three-dimensional way of thinking about numbers, because sometimes one approach doesn't work for all young people. And is that what this is all about, making it more accessible, maybe for, for children who don't understand written numbers. I think you're right, because with young people and adults, sometimes they've got a negative experience of maths in school, and then whenever they see a maths question for the rest of their life, they're like, nope, nope, I can't do it, not for me, or they, as adults, a tax return, nope, 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 I can't do my tax return numbers. So if anything can help young people or adults, and if that includes colour like this method, I'm all for it. Why do we get so frightened about maths? It's a great question. It's all about maths anxiety. So this is a negative emotional reaction we get when seeing maths and numbers. It could be in the real world, like a restaurant bill, or in a classroom situation. But the key thing is that it impedes and interferes with your ability to do maths. Because, you know, when you're doing something important, you know, if you're Taylor Swift singing or you're David Beckham or Cristiano Ronaldo playing a football game, they get a bit nervous or if you're presenting. But if you're too nervous, it, you get jangly and then you can't think... You know, the times in a, you get given a question, you're like rabbit in headlights, and that mass anxiety, that palpitations, the heart racing, sweat... Even if I'm put on the spot on telly or in my classroom, I'm like, oh, do, I, do, I, do I know it? So, actually, it can impact all of us. Genuinely. My heart races a bit. OK, so let's put you on the spot. <laughs> um, in, in that film, there was yeah. a, a, a maths problem using the pictures yes. and the colours. 
Which we can show you. Yes. I hope. Right. Yes. Go on, tell me, explain. So, um, first thing what we do is we look at the, we start from the bottom. Yeah. So that circle at the bottom, what colour is that? The circle. Purple, purple. number nine. Yeah, so that so is a nine. nine. Yeah. And then the triangle is which colour? Green, Green, number seven. Green. But when there's a triangle, it means a multiplication. So we do nine times the seven, okay. which is, and we, well, I want to point it for the audience. Uh, but the way to yeah. work it out using the, the chart is, what colour is on the outside of that sort of sun, almost like that, that banana type thing? What colour is that? Six. Six yellow. That's the yellow, yeah. yeah, that's the tens. And the inside, the circle, is, a, is what colour there? Pink. Pink, Pink yeah. yeah. So six tens and three units, or three ones, as my students will correct me. So 63. 63. So uh, just another way for young people to engage with maths. Because sometimes, you know, when we, we've got students who are looking at numbers and column method, grid method, and they throw their hands up and say, oh, sir, I can't get it. Whereas you're like, oh, oh I see, I'm nine look at this. times seven is 63. I see. All right, okay. And it just gets them engaged. It's a whole new way of. When you've, I guess when you've had a lifetime of doing numbers, it's a whole new way for your brain to work. But if you can train young people, who maybe can't do the numbers, that's the way to do it. And maths is a language. Again, if we had aliens who came down today, they would still understand prime numbers the same way we do, but they might count in, in 15s or 27s because they've got 27 fingers. So colour is just another way of representing numbers. Do you think the way we teach maths has changed enough? I would say changing for the better, but not quickly enough. It's almost like you're changing a ship. You know, you're, it's heading towards an iceberg, the math ship, and I'm the captain, and we're going towards an iceberg. So we're moving away from it, but we've got to move away quicker, otherwise bits of the ship will get chipped away. Will it catch on, the, uh, the colours? I think definitely in primary schools, teachers are always looking for ways to get, you know, that one student there, or two or three, that think, oh, sir, maths is not for me, or miss, maths is not for me. This could be a way to open the door for them. What's next then? What other ways can we trick our brain into relaxing a bit more into numbers? I think it's showing people maths in the real world. My students are obsessed by football league tables or the scores and Strictly Come Dancing. Darts. Oh, darts, yeah, Luke Littler with all the checkouts. Like, again, Luke Littler, he said at school he wasn't that good at maths naturally, but over time, through repetition and practice, he's become confident and competent. Now it looks like a maths genius. So is that is it repetition and practice? Is it basically like a skill we need to learn? Yes, 100%. So that you're almost speaking the hymn sheet from the charity National Numeracy because they say that maths, obviously there's a spectrum of ability. Some people we know from school pick up maths and numbers quicker, but it's a skill. If you stop using it, you lose it.